history has been made in the Premier League this year with Erlen Haaland. Uh, you heard it there from Laura and Ali. Uh, they've made him uh, their their player of the season. Of course, um, Goldstein going with, with a Man United player doesn't surprise me there, Casemiro. But I do agree, Casemiro has really been value mon- for money for Manchester United. Who would be your player of the season? Who would you uh, crown the player of the season this coronation uh, it's weekend? Gotta be, uh, this coronation weekend, I will have to crown Erling Haaland as the player of the season. Come on, for, who's done that since, who was it? Andy Cole. Nobody, you know, like, come on, he's, 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 he's phenomenal. And look, everyone could talk about how oh, well was in the Man City team. Uh, you still got to score the goals. Chances for him. You still got to score the goals. Some of the goals that he has scored, look at that finish the other night. Yeah. Like, he's chipped it over the goalkeeper. That is, that's world class, man. Like, usually a normal player would probably try and hit it to what, could we get taught to hit it towards the, as a striker, you get hit, you, you you get taught to hit anywhere near the goalie's legs, maybe through his legs or round his, anywhere near his legs. It will be hard for a goalkeeper to save, yeah. But he said he waited, yeah. And I I, I listened to what he said after the game. He said he waited, and um, he said the balance was right. He said um, the timing was right, and he had the time to chip it over the goalkeeper. So. Me listening to that as a striker, and I'm a basic striker, by the way. I'm not; those thought processes are not going through my head. <laughs> You're thinking, get it down. Get <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm thinking, I'm just thinking, get it through. Like what you get taught, go near his legs. The goalkeeper might not have a chance. He won't have a chance. To, you know, so it just shows you the type of intelligence he has and quick thinking he has, and being ice cold in them situations to make a, a situation like that look sexy. And he did. He, he made that look sexy, man. He really like, did. The way he chipped that ball, man, and, and then this went out, I was like, yeah, this guy, this is a guy who's in the form of, form of his life and he understands the game to a degree where you can't, I can't even comprehend in that situation because it's just, you know, these things are split seconds, these decisions. Yeah. As a striker, you're just going, you're going in a goal and me, I think too much. So I've always been an instinctive striker. And that's when you get the best out of me. But when you're going through on goal like that and you see his processes, then you just think, yeah, man, he's got it. Uh, so he's my he's my, he's my my um, player of the season. Haaland has overtaken uh, Alan Shearer and Andy Cole, but he's still some way short of uh, Dixie Dean's uh, tally of 60 goals in the 1927 to 1928 season. 60 goals in a season mm-hmm. from uh, Dixie Dean. So, But Haaland, 22 years of age, have we seen him at his best yet? That's that's the scary thing. 22, mm. doing it in his first season in the Premier League. You know, <laughs> a, a colleague of ours at TalkSport here, a good friend of mine, Rory Jennings, he said uh, at the start of the season, and it keeps coming back to haunt him, that he wouldn't even score 20 goals this season. My word is he's <laughs> proven wrong. Oh, mate, mate. Do you know, do you know what, um, Madge, as well? I have to say, see how the, the Premier League has been structured as well now, nowadays as well. Like So when you're talking about Andy Cole, when you're talking about Alan Shearer, all the greats, right? The way the Premier League structured now, th- I think those guys would get a lot of goals as well. I'm not sure about in the time frame, but they'll be in the same category as uh, Erling Haaland, definitely. But the way the Premier League structured now is structured to get more goals, you know? I I know we talk about the defending that's not it's not as great, but there weren't great defenders back in the day as well. I get that as well, but there were there were more be- there were more of a um, defensive minded um, Premier League back then. Teams and managers, was, yeah. Teams and managers were more defensive minded. They weren't just gung ho. Let's go and let's t- get possession football, possession football, and have a high line and not worry about trekking back because we believe in our two defenders that are speedy as well to 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 um defend the goal with a speedy attacker you know on on the counter attack people were more um back then i would say people were more structured to like defend better defend first and then we we'll go and attack and and get as many goals as we can but nowadays i think it's attack more than defense Absolutely. Um, and like you said, the, the number of goals, the style of goals, he's got such a variety of play. You know, he 
for me, he's not just a fox in the box. He does score a lot of goals within the six-yard box. He finds some space in there. But yeah, as you yeah. said, with that chip the other night, he's got a range of, 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 of shots. Of finishes. And yeah. the power and the ability to run past. He's such a hybrid striker for me because he does have the power and the ability to run past players as well. He's very he's physical. A, he's so direct, so direct. So if you looked at how he scored that goal, that, that free ball that Grealish put in for him, if you look at his first thought, and he even said it, he came on the TV and said it, he said, my first thought was go towards goal. Yeah. It worked to come to feet. You don't care about that. He wants to go towards goal. That's where he's going to be more dangerous. So that's where he's valued. So he knows that. So he's like, and I've got, and he's got players behind him. And one thing you got, you can't end, underestimate. He's got about two or three or four players in his team that can give him assists. It's not like just the number 10 giving you assists. He's got about four or five or six number 10s <laughs> giving him chances to yeah. score goals. So it's all geared up to that. So he's going to score goals anyway. As long as he's hungry and wanting to get on the end of things, he's going to be there. And he's making sure that's his, his gameplay. And it's working. And it works. It's the icing on the cake for Man City. I, I know that uh, our colleague Simon Jordan, who is the king of the debate, talked about how you know, the fact that he's in that Manchester City team is kind of almost a bit of a cheat code and that he believes that Harry Kane would score the same amount of goals as Haaland. Do you think it's as simple as that? Or do we have to put respect on the fact that this is a 22-year-old who's scoring record numbers of goals, not only in the Premier League, but you look at what he's doing in the Champions League and he was doing it in the Bundesliga with, uh, with, with his previous club. And, you know, he's come to the Premier League, which is, you know, some people would say a harder league, done it in his first season. I'd, I'd, listen, you can't poo poo on what he's done, man. Like that's just what respect he Respect the vibes. Done. Respect, yeah, respect the vibes. Respect the vibes, man. But you got to look at him as well and think you got to be in a certain mind frame. He's get. Do you know how much money he's getting a week as well? And he's still hungry to prove everybody that he's worth every penny. You know, like some people get that sort of money and think, well, I don't need to do much more. I'll, I'll score like just fifteen, twenty. I've done my job. Like there's not a lot of people that can do that anyway. But he's still there thinking, nah, it's not a 15, 20 is not enough. I've got to go for 40. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's the type of person he is. He's got that drive. And he said something very, um, he, do you know what? He said something very um, outstanding for me l last night when he did, when, when, whenever it was. I can't remember when I watched it. But he said something very outstanding to me. He said about his dad, right? He talked about his dad and he said, do you know what? Really and truly, Football can get taken away from you at any time. He says, look at my dad, for instance, Very when true. he had to retire early, you know. So he's already got that drive. He's seen what's happened to his dad. He's thinking, do you know what? I'm going to use every ounce of my ability, every ounce of my strength to, to fulfill my career, which you got to commend to the guy. He's doing that tenfold. Like, he's not wasting any time, you know. So... That's why I respect him, and he's he's looked at his his dad, and he's think he's thinking, nah, I'm not letting that happen to me. I'm never going to live with regrets. Yeah, you got to respect it, man. An incredible achievement from Haaland. Um, of course, Colin, as you know, I do uh, play and and run a uh, a Saturday team with my good friend Tom Cod. Shout out to Tom Cod. And the only person I could say he's probably done better than Haaland this season is our own striker, Jed Livermore, cousin of uh, Jake Livermore, who scored 30 goals in 16 appearances. That's not bad, is it, Colin? 30 goals in 16 games. 13 goals no, in 60. 30. 30 goals in 16 games? Yep, let's sign him up. <laughs> bro, bro, what kind of league is that he's playing? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Can we'll, I we'll, play? Yeah. <laughs> next, se next season, you're already on top of it. We'll have 16 Mate, goals. I want to play, man. I, I want my confidence to build as well, you know. <laughs>